Let's talk about minds for just a moment. That is when, let's talk about this whole thing. This information is something that came to me. It wasn't something that I figured out. It was something I was given. And, and it, it was given a little bit at a time. And because I am one of those people who is like, where does that fit? How does it, I remember things for years because it's hanging out there in my hanging question closet. <laughs> I have a whole closet full of hanging questions. And, um, and that when that first statement came, that mind is the awareness property of space and space is the location aspect of mind, I was absolutely silent. It was this moment of me thinking about that who you know wondering where did that voice come from who asked it <laughs> why did it say that and i think it's really important to put together a couple pieces here regarding mind space if that is the beginning and and in the ancient days in ancient 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 times it was referred to as the void it was also referred to as the I am. It was also referred to as source and or as God. Those were all the names that were given to this state that I have renamed mind space because the mind space itself um, ap appears to be frozen light that is also aware. I think it's light that's moving at such a high frequency that when you're in it, you think that it's absolutely silent and still. You're like paralyzed. You're like frozen right with it. And there's nothing to cause you to move because there's no individual self. There's no awareness of yesterday or tomorrow. There's no awareness of your life, your house, your dog, your husband, your, your children, your job. None of that exists when you're in that. There's just this overpowering bliss. It's, um, it's impossible to describe. And because there's no form in that, at that level, there's nothing to discuss. There's nothing to describe. There's no form. And, and so and there's no movement. And there's no time. So that stuff, mind space, void, I am, source, God, whatever you want to call it, is where we start from. There could be other stuff out there beyond that. But so far, nobody has penetrated that. At this point so that mind space is the beginning point and then I just moved from there because I've been in and out of that many times can you describe just a little bit more that you had a few Kundalini experience and you found yourself there there's lights there's a feeling of bliss can you describe right. a little bit of that yes um, so so when you when you go there, when when Kundalini, there's this ancient um, event in a human being's life that triggers a greater unfolding of that human. When that occurs, it rockets you into that space. It it moves up through the body and explodes in the brain, and there goes your perception and your consciousness and all of your thinking and all of yourself and you find yourself in this state i guess i'll call it that is totally black except for these little tiny 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 lights that are twinkling they're like pinpoint size lights that are expanding in every or your perception is or expanding or consciousness something's expanding it's expanding and it just is moving slowly out and it, and you are those lights and the the awareness is of absolute and utter bliss and 
and the only thing that you know at that point is I am and and you realize that you're the entire universe that you're in that place the starting point of the entire universe that's what you know it's not a thinking it's not um, it, it's it's not somebody waving a sign that says you who <laughs> you know you have arrived in the core of the universe or the core of the cosmos it looks like you have catapulted yourself deep 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 into deep space and there's a million of these little twinkling uh, lights all around you and and they're moving apart they're just you know but there's not a sense of movement it's like you're frozen in this bliss <laughs> but you can see this these lights and and that's it only lasts a few seconds and then you leave that state and you start descending back through all the stages of existence or uh, the, through, I like to say through all the stages of becoming a human and once you've made that journey a number of times you begin to pay attention to the fact that there's really just a couple steps and now you're a human so you move from this god state to this human state in this very kind of a smooth um, process and um, during moments when i was experiencing teleportation i could see almost the same process happening which we'll, maybe we'll talk about that later. But um, you see the light gather into outlined form, like little pixels of light. And then you see like these sheets of uh, fill in. And then, and then it's, it starts to uh, take shape with detail. And then color arrives and then action. And it comes alive. It is the most astounding thing to watch and and it's very uh different from what most people talk about when they talk about you know states of bliss etc cetera, etc cetera. um and so i often think well, did did you really experience the full bliss did you become non-existent only existing in this god state because when you when you enter that when you when that energy moves up through you and explodes your brain your body is designed to take that energy and reorganize itself more efficiently and utilize the frequencies differently so that you can expand your uh the range of frequencies that you have access to and we are designed to unfold to uh, all knowing states and i have been in some of those states and they're uh, let me just say wow <laughs> just wow they are states in which you cannot you can't even begin to imagine um the amount of no the, the expansiveness of the knowing and the detail of that knowing so but let's talk about that later let's stick with mind space <laughs> at this point in time so that's the source of ourselves we come from that light we are aware intelligent light and and so that if that light is the awareness property of space and space is literally the location aspect of a mind of the mind the great mind then that makes it possible for an individual who might form to a be aware and b have a distinct individual location so that so there's the basis of becoming first step okay does that make sense <laughs> There was one thing I would have liked you to touch upon is that when you talked about a lot of people have that ex experience of, because what you described, my thought was like, well, I want to feel that. Have I ever feel, felt a little bit of that? And then you went there a little bit. You said, well, some people have described, but I don't think they had the full experience. But the, yeah. the, the few times that people could say, well, I felt like all of a sudden just an 
unconditional feeling of love or I felt, and some people describe exactly Kundalini. They, they've described that yeah. they went into an I am space where I didn't exist anymore. There was no more self kind of thing. So no. people have been there. Like it, it, it's, it, yes. It's, okay. And the little glimpse of, from your experience of all the, the clients that you've had and you've talked to, people have, have had feelings of that. They've, they've touched it. That's right. If you, um, if you even come close to it, you will enter into unconditional love. And it is extremely powerful. It's a life changer like right now. Everything about your understanding of life changes. Kundalini can start moving up and it can stop at the, you know, the second chakra, the second nerve plexus. Um, coming up from the base of the spine it can stop at the third it can stop at the fourth which is your heart it can stop at the fifth um, it, or the sixth or if it gets all the way up and moves you out of the body then you're in this mind space where nothing exists except this bliss and these these dots of light and and time and space and everything is gone and you're you are gone um, but if you if it hits let's say it stops at this um nerve plexus in the brain voila you have clairvoyance you'll begin to see things light that you weren't able to perceive before um if it stops at the throat area then music oratory um speaking the gift of healing with language um, writing uh, all of that whether you're writing I'll say a movie script or a novel or a documentary or whatever all of that goes with this right here if it stops at your heart um, you're probably gonna cry for about two years because your heart is open and it and you, you can't close it again so if it stops down in the belly just above the belly button two fingers above the belly button um then you're going to understand something about sports about movement about dance about um, basketball football about power just raw power and that includes uh ceo power as well as um engineering power all of that kind of stuff if it stops um, below the belly button two two or three fingers below the belly button uh, that can be a little more problematic but it's a very that's a very sensuous spot now you're going to be overwhelmed <laughs> with feeling and with sen sexuality as well as sensuality a lot of people who end up with the activation just in that second chakra um really become madams or uh prostitutes because they uh, the, the, i have to say the truth is um once that center is activated then you are turned on all the time and and the relief that you're going to seek is constant sexual relief so um that can be an issue however that also gives you um like a, a sense of knowing what other people are feeling and so that can be used in just a dozens of different directions uh, doctors nurses um, animal handlers um, teachers you name it that ability to sense what other people are feeling is forever on um, and then it and then I think the the bottom chakra is really the one you want at the very least to be activated and that is a renewal of the physical pattern of your physicality and you stay youthful etc you don't age as fast so each chakra has uh, some sort of energy that it uh, promotes and there's a downside to each one um, but it's really um, it's really important to focus on the upside um, if you get into seeing and you can see other dimensions 
and you can see other beings and other forms in other dimensions. I've had some people who had a full-blown kundalini. Oh my. <laughs> um, they What they saw were all of the, I'm not sure what they're called. The Edgar Casey called them shades. They're beings who have not let go, who've died and they haven't let go of their anger <clears throat> or they haven't let go of their I'm losing my voice already <coughs> excuse me they haven't th their features become twisted and um, their agenda you know they have an agenda and that, that twists all their you can see it in their face that uh, that there are something um, and they're needy. They're very needy. And that will scare the daylights out of somebody who's all of a sudden seeing things and, um, and is, has no preparation for that. So, you know, that's a downside. There are downsides. So all of these steps yeah. that you need to go through in order to feel, we go back to this mind space. So we all have the potential to feel this mind space where right. it's not special for one person who has and one person who hasn't. We're all no. just evolving and we all come from there and we all That's have the right. potential to feel that. That's right. That's right. And the energy is going to move up and activate to a greater or lesser degree any of the energy centers. And, um, and when you have a full-blown experience, it activates all of them and carries you into this source, this God state, in which you understand the nature of reality much differently than what you started out with. Mm -hmm.